Hey everyone, this is Nick DeRobertis teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be talking about simple time series forecasting in Excel. This is part of our lecture segment on free cash flow estimation and forecasting as part of a broader goal of building out the full discounted cash flow valuation of stock. So we already covered uh, the overview of forecasting as well as the simple forecast models in previous videos. So make sure to take a look at those if you haven't already. Now we're getting into examples of how to do this. Um, and in this video, focusing on the Excel side of how we carry out these simple forecasts uh, with the simple models. So let's go over to an Excel sheet, which just has the data on sales and cost of goods sold across three different years. And the goal here is to forecast next year's sales and cost of goods sold. Um, so we will look at the four different approaches uh, or four different uh, models, as well as forecasting the levels of the items and forecasting the percentage of cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales. So um, we can make a little extra space here. Um, so let's see, um, we're going to um, have potentially different method for sales and cost of goods sold. Um, first, let's just keep them the same. Um, so we can have the uh, trend model, the compounded annual growth model, the average model, and the recent value model. Um, and we'll just use those same methods across both. Um, so the trend model, um, we um, need to run a regression, OLS regression, um, using time as the uh, independent variable. So we have to create that time variable. So we can just start at zero. You could also start it at one or whatever. Um, so 2017 is zero, 2018 is one, and uh, 2019 is two. The important thing is just that it increases by one each period. And uh, we could go and use the data analysis tool pack regression in order to do this. Um, but considering that there's only a single independent variable, uh, we can do it just with plain Excel functions using the slope and intercept functions. Um, so we can... Um, come over here. Um, so this is going to be our sales forecast, and this is our, our cost to get sold forecast. So we can use the slope function to find the coefficient on the T variable in the regression. So the Y here is going to be the values for sales, and the X is going to be uh, this value for T. And now for T, uh, we're going to want to have this totally fixed because when we drag this down for cost of goods sold, we don't want it to move. And if we were doing this over in a different spot, uh, we wouldn't want it to move either. So totally fixed on that. Um, and then for the uh, sales, we do want it to move down when we estimate cost of goods sold, but we don't want it to move left or right. So we want it fixed on the column, but not fixed on the row. Um, so fixed on the column, we want the dollar sign in front of the column letter. Uh, so there we go. Uh, so that's the slope. The slope is 50. Um, and we want to multiply that slope by, uh, whatever that last period, uh, T was plus one, uh, to get one period into the future. And then we want to add the intercept from the regression. So again, similar fixing here, uh, fixed on the column. And here, uh, completely fixed. Um, so that gets us our estimate of the next period. 
using the trend approach. And we can drag that down to then uh, get the same thing for cost of goods sold as well. Now coming to the compounded annual growth. Uh, so the first step in that model is to calculate the historical compounded annual growth, and then we're going to apply it into the future. So to calculate that compounded annual growth, we're going to take the ending period divided by the beginning period. And then we're going to take that to the power of uh, this period's t minus uh, the original period's t. And then subtract 1 at the end. Um, wait, that doesn't seem right. Um, oh, sorry, uh, it needs to be 1 divided by uh, the difference in periods. There we go, now that looks right. Growing at almost 5% per year. Um, so I'll just format that as a percentage um, and then I can drag it down to get the same for the um, cost of goods sold. Um, but we'll notice I didn't fix this appropriately. So let me um, fix these uh, dates and then drag again and now it looks right. Okay, um, so now we can take that calculated compounded annual growth rate and apply it to the most recent period. So we grab the most recent period here, again, fixed on the column, not on the row, multiply by one plus uh, the compounded annual growth rate fixed on the column, but not the row. There we have our estimate of the next period, and we can get the same for the cost of goods sold. And now the average approach, you just take an average of the historical data, uh, nice and straightforward. Fix on the column, not on the row again. Uh, and the recent value approach, you just take the most recent value and Again, fixed in the column, not in the row. So those are four different methods on the levels. Um, now we can think about doing the same, um, but with um, these different, um, but, but using a percentage, forecasting the percentage of cost of goods of sales instead. So um, in order to use the percentage methods, we first need to calculate the historical percentage. So we're just going to take cost of goods sold uh, divided by sales. That's going to be the historical percentage. And we want to calculate that for all the years. Um, and we can get the compound and annual growth rate of that as well. Um, and now we have kind of, um, so we're, we're focusing now on just getting the cost of goods sold forecast, but now the cost of goods sold forecast is affected by the sales forecast as well. So we have the four different methods for forecasting sales and we have the four different methods for forecasting the percentage. So that leads to 16 different uh, ways that we can now forecast this. Um, so let me take the same uh, for the sales. Oops, uh, copy. So we're going to have these same uh, four methods for sales. Uh, and we should be able to just copy these as well since I did all the fixing appropriately. Okay, and now uh, we want to go and estimate the percentage of sales. So um, we can uh, then within that, we're going to have the different approaches. So uh, for here, the average, uh, for here at the recent value approach, um, we're going to have four at the trend. 
and for uh, the compound and annual growth. So for the average, uh, we should be able to just copy this over. Hopefully that worked. Yep. Um, so then we can use that for all of these. Um, and for the recent value, we should be able to copy that. Um, all of this working because we did the uh, fixing appropriately. Um, so recent value is grabbing that recent value. Um, trend, we can um, see it is using the trend model appropriately. So bring that over for those four. Um, and then compounded annual growth rate. Um, we can see that it is applying that to the uh, most recent period. So then we can drag that over as well. So then in order to get the actual estimate of the sales, we just multiply these two things together, the forecasted sales by the forecasted percentage, and that gets us our estimate of the cost of goods sold. So we have all these different estimates uh, that are coming from putting these two different methods together. So some other things that we might want to do in the forecasting process, um, you know, normally you wouldn't just calculate all these models. That's really just for sake of example. Uh, what you would do as a first step is uh, graph the data. We want to plot it so we can see what it's looked like historically. Um, so we're going to insert a chart. Line chart works well for this. Um, so this would be the uh, financials over time. Um, and there we can see you know, both of these are fairly flat. Uh, they go up and then they go down. So uh, you know maybe the, the recent or average value approaches would be fine for this. Um, Another thing we might want to do, since we have gone through the process of using all these different forecast methods, um, we can take all these different cost of goods sold forecasts that we have, um, and we can uh, do a box and whisker um, plot on that, um, which is basically going to tell us uh, the distribution of the possible forecasts based on the method. So COGS forecast by method. Um, and we can see that forecasts are as like low as you know, 625 or so, go up to 720, uh, but most of them fall in this uh, 650 to 690 kind of range. Um, so uh, then we understand what the range of possible forecasts could be based on the method. So that's a quick overview of how we can carry out these simple forecasting methods in Excel. In the next video, we'll come back and look at this on the Python side. So thanks for listening and see you next time.